Hi, this is Ivy from Homeschool on the Range. I admin one of the groups for the Good and the Beautiful called the Good and the Beautiful for Middle and High Schools. And one of the questions that we get all of the time is about what science are you using, what science are you using, because most of the Good and the Beautiful sciences are for elementary school. But I want to show you one of the ones that they already have available that is more for your upper grade schools. This is going to be for last year of elementary school and well into middle school. Um, it's called Beginning Chemistry. Now, if you followed them for any length of time, you know that they were going to be releasing high school sciences this summer, 2019. They had earth science all ready to roll. They had samples up and everything. And then at the last minute, they pulled it and decided that they weren't going to be doing high school science after all, or at least not for the time being. That made a lot of people sad. And therefore, the question of what are you doing for science has resurfaced once again. But if you are teaching middle schoolers, never fear. The beginning chemistry that they already have available is perfect for middle school. Let's look inside. Inside, there would normally be vocabulary cards, first thing. Um, we've already cut those up and laminated them and have them ready to go, so they're not in my booklet anymore. The, they have a lesson on introduction to chemistry. It already starts off with a science experiment. They have a lesson on the scientific method, which is pretty in-depth. It includes some reading together. It includes the mini books, like... Um, like there are in the other science courses, but there aren't as many, many books in this course as in the others because it is designed for older kids. It talks about equipment. It talks about the scientific method. It talks about lab safety, all the basic stuff that you're going to need in um, the beginning of any good, strong science course. And then we get into scientific measurement. And it doesn't just hit on customary versus metric measurements. It talks about volume. It talks about the calculations that you will need to be doing. Talks about conversions. There is another um, lab. There are ways to use your equipment. You're going to need to get a chemistry set to use with this. We've got a great one. I'll link that up in the video. Um, I think that they probably give you an idea of which one to get. I think they may have a suggestion on their website. Um, I honestly don't know because we've had our set for so long. There's more labs. Pretty much any lesson that I turn to in here is going to be fairly advanced. So what's this one? Lesson 7, Chemical and Physical Properties. It tells me everything that we're going to need to do our lab and what I need to do ahead of time. There's an optional read aloud. I like to do the read aloud with my kids because they're not going to stay little forever. And they're already 12 and 15, so... Um, any time that I can get snuggling to read with them is a good time. We talk about discovering properties through an activity. There's a lot of Socratic method in these sciences. There's a lot of sitting down and talking together as a family and discussing answers and hashing out things. Yes, I'm talking with my hands. So this whole page, Socratic method until we get to here, observing chemical and physical properties. And we're going to talk about it again. And then we are going to do an activity. That's your lab. We're doing density. Got some different images to go with the lab. Calculating some things. Got a worksheet here. Got some cutouts. I don't normally cut them out. We just talk about which, which one they go under. Or if you want, you can cut them out and glue them in the appropriate place. And mom, here's your key. So pretty much any one that I get into, I want to see if I can find one with extensions. Oh, here we're doing ionic and covalent bonding. You have to admit, you don't want your second grader, well, you might want your second grader doing it. Most second graders aren't going to be doing ionic and covalent bonding. This is definitely one for your upper grades kiddos. Some of the lessons have extensions which means that you can do them, if you have a middle schooler and a high schooler, say, you could do these together and then give your older kid the extensions. I'm trying to find one of these lessons. Uh, naturally, because I want to find one, I can't. But anyway, the extensions, you do the whole lesson together, and then for the older kids, they have research projects or extra labs that they have to do as part of their extension. And that's just to make it a little more beefed up 
for kids who, who this might be just a little bit too basic for. But for your average middle schooler, let's say fifth, sixth, seventh grade, uh, this is going to be a great course. It's already for sale at the Good and the Beautiful. They have had it there for a couple of years. Um, it's dried, it's tested, and keep praying, and maybe one day they'll get their high school science out too. I hope that this helps you.